Turn your handles to 120. 120. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sins And won the victory Oh, victory! Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and He bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is to Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about His healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and he caused the blind to see and then i cried dear jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow jesus came and brought to me the victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory, and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood You are not hidden There's never been a moment you were forgotten You are not hopeless Though you never have been broken, broken, your innocence stolen I hear you whisper underneath your breath I hear you, S.O.S., your S.O.S. I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkness, fighting. 
is true, I will rescue you. There is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. I'll be your shelter, I'll be your armor. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel like empty feeling? Cause shame's not all that stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus.
guilty Do you care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus soul Um, I just forgot that all you kids, it don't matter what age, Mary's going to have all the kids sing. So if you want to, go ahead in the back, and that, that's where she'll be. So all you kids, go ahead and go back here. All right, let's get behind the center for you. And found favor in his eyes So God sent them a miracle The only thing they longed for Within a year they would hold a son As Elisha prophesied One day they ran from the field Brought the child to his mother she held his head there on her knees Until he died at noon that day She didn't tell anyone She ran straight to the man of God If anybody asked her She replied along the way It is a well Oh, it is a well There is peace in my despair and knowing God will hear my prayer and I will cling to the promise that He brings. Even death will have no sting, no power in hell. In His presence I will dwell where it is the way. And he breathed new life again Friend, God doesn't ever change If you'll have that woman's faith He'll send you a miracle But until then you can't say It is a well Oh, it is a well There is peace in my despair And knowing God will hear my prayer And I promise that he brings even death will have no sting no power in hell in his presence i will dwell where it is well oh it is well And knowing God has heard my prayer And I will cling To the promise that He brings Even death 
tonight, ain't it? We're always glad to have them. Let's get behind it. Let's get behind Mark as he gives us a message. Good evening, everybody. You give us a warm welcome every time. You don't have to do that. We get a lot of hugs. Well, I know, but I, I feel... 
I have to feel at home, don't I? <clears throat> 50, 50 years ago, 50 plus now, um, I came over to the Little Red Church, and uh, good gracious, you people. Um, I had met you all at the, the Wesleyan Church in South Webster where Beth, uh, Debbie and um, Phil was holding revival and the brown trio was singing and you had a big old bus, uh, school bus, and uh, brought a whole load every night except for Wednesday and Saturday, of course. And uh, between you and um, Russell E. Scott, um, I didn't know exactly where I was some nights. <laughs> I wasn't raised in a noisy place. I was raised in super duper Bible preaching and super duper singing. We had four part harmony choir with just about 12 or 13 people, but every all four parts were singing. And um, then when I came out here, oh, you all have great singing, always had, and you still have. Uh, had to raise some of them and some of them just started and then and they stay, it stayed, like me. You started and you stayed. Um, so we're glad to be here. I've got, I've got something to tell you. Two or three things before I preach. But if you want to uh, turn your Bibles to uh, it's just the book of Galatians. We're going to hop, skip, and jump there. Okay. This is a paper that Bethany had, had this idea. And uh, so I went uh, downstairs to the computer where my, in my bear cave, and um, I typed these out. Debbie didn't really tell me all of these, but um, uh, I pretty well knew what she wanted. But Bethany wanted her to have goals. She wasn't doing well. She was in a bad, bad shape. She went three weeks without eating, she had lost weight, 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 weight. And um, we, everything that we tried to get her to eat, she couldn't. She tried. She really, really tried. And she couldn't. And um, so they took her off to the, in the ambulance again. And um, Beth and, and Heather was there that went with her. And I just stayed home and cried. And that's exactly, I'll never see her alive again. She was just that bad. And I'm, I'm not a, I'm, I don't get hysterical about illnesses. You know, if you're bad, I, I'll say you're bad, but if, if you're not really that bad, you're not really that bad. I mean, you know, uh, my favorite thing to tell the kids when they complained of illnesses is, ah, you'll live. And they did, you know. They're, they're both getting close to 50. But anyway, so she, I, we made this list. Now, uh, you don't have to clap or praise the Lord till I'm done. But these are Debbie's goals. To get to Beach Fork, check. To get to Alex's last football game, check. To go to Life Change, check. To get to Rubyville, check. And uh, to get rid of her walker, check. To eat normal, Check, 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 check. <laughs> I fed her good. And what, what I couldn't fix, I went and bought, got it. Um, some of that 50 pounds she came back, but not a whole lot of it. But, uh, no braces. Check. Anybody's ever had a neck brace? Boy, those things are nice to get rid of. I had one young when I had my neck surgery. Uh, she talked to her mother about every day, but she, it was months that she had not seen her mom. And so to visit Lola was a great big one. Check. To drive. Check. She did it the other day. Now you can, you can clap on that one. And I have now, I've, I've uh, went out to, um, uh, what's his name, Alex's uh, Track and field meets. He puts the shot and, I, <laughs> and flings the discus. And he is, he, the other night he got his 
the Northwest record in discus. And that's what his goal was this year. And he beat it by like three or four feet, which is to beat a record by a little bit was good. But he, he really, he, he jumped up and down. I'm going to tell him he's got to do that at church now. He runs the aisle sometimes, but I'm going to say, now the next time you get blessed, I want you to just jump up and down like you did for that 51 and 1. And then lastly, because I have been, I've been doing that. I go for hours, and then I, when I work at the, at the school, I'm gone for uh, eight hours or so. And so Debbie now, the last thing on the thing was her independence, and she has that too. So let, now you can give her a hand. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. Give the Lord the praise. Thank the Lord. And, and most, a lot of you were there. She's already preached one time. And next month, she'll be right here in her old pulpit preaching to you all once next, once next month. So, huh? That's right. Well, she's got. Uh, she's got uh, five vertebrae uh, in her neck. That's all titanium, and I do too. We have matching necks now, and she's got double chin. And I've got a. I've got a turkey chin. My mother and I. And my grandmother, when we lose weight, here's where we lose it. And, and it makes you look horribly old, but I don't care about that. I got the gray, white hair and silver hair. What do you want to call that? Beautiful hair. And I got hair. Yay. Okay. One other thing. And I'll uh, see. I got to be careful here. It's not as bad as Rubyville. They, have, they don't want any more than 45 minutes out there. That's why I don't get to preach there. Um, the week after... Uh, <laughs> what's this? I just speak the truth. Do not ask me a question if you don't want the answer. Um, let's see. What is, oh, I know. The week after Mother's Day... Uh, of course, we've, we've not had uh, Jubilee uh, through Cupid, Cupid or whatever his name was, COVID. <laughs> Something like that, I, and I'm getting old. I'll be 75 this fall. Now, that's old. And, but, uh, hey, I, I'm okay. Uh, anyway, it, that is Jubilee. And, and you probably already have heard, you Facebook people have heard, my uh, children... And Debbie wanted to do something for me uh, because this is to, Friday will be 50 years since I was called to preach. And so they wanted to do something special for that. Well, you all had something for me when, I was four, when there's 40, so I didn't care to hit the 50. And uh, we didn't have nothing special for our 50th anniversary uh, because, uh, well, we just didn't. And, that's, and that was that's an agreement. We've always agreed on everything. But uh, then, also, this will be our 25th year of Jubilee. Should have been our 27th, but, you know, COVID again. So we're starting, we're starting back, and we have some fantastic announcements. Uh, the, the singers are a little different than they have been, at, at least the nights. On Monday night, we have... I just lost it. Um, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, Tuesday night, it's going to be like a, it's like a Gaither gathering of more or less local groups. They're going to fill the platform, and I don't know what they're all going to do. 
Brian said I, I still have the, a choir, my normal choir numbers, so I, I thought maybe he would work it in with the choir, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, Mike Blanton and Evidence is Monday night. Thank you, thank you. And Wednesday night, which you, you people at uh, Beach Fork dismiss all, all the time for Jubilee, and you have heard the primitives for 24 years on Wednesday night. That's just, I don't know why they stuck them on Wednesday, but that's okay. They, we, I, they are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful men of God. They are super duper men, and I, they, we work with them so much well. But this year, because this is their last year ever, they are finishing up their re, re, uh, retirement tour, and the, so they're going to be there on Friday night. And we look to have, Friday night attendance usually goes down, but uh, we look for the, all the fans of the uh, primitives in this area will be there and we'll have a be bigger crowd. And that will be their farewell uh, concert or service. We don't like to say concert because we have service. And we tell the singers, now we don't want a concert, we want a, we want a church service. And, and, and they're glad to hear that, most of them. And all the ones we've had here, one group, and I won't tell you which one that was, we haven't had them back, they, they gave us a concert. And, and they did their little silly jokes and stuff. And, uh, but that was it. One group out of all these groups that we've invited in here and, and over there, one group has disappointed us, and that's all. And they don't even sing anymore. So, well, they didn't need to sing gospels. They need to go country. Because they want to have just jokes and stuff. And I don't care for a little humor, you know me. Before, the, before, before I'm done preaching, you will laugh at something, because I can't help it. And uh, we're, but Karen, you will have Karen Peck and New River on Wednesday night. And, uh, and then on Thursday night, we have the 11th hour, which, uh, could you get any better than those two groups? Um, now, to get back to my 50th year, and my 25th, Brian, the, the Evangelist Outreach wanted to do something for my being 25 years, the, their choir director. And so, um, so it's going to be a combination, Mark's 50th, Mark's 25th. That's pretty good. Uh, I don't know if they have, I doubt it. They'll, they probably won't have any offering plates out, will they? Okay. <laughs> teasing, teasing. Yeah, just, yes, yes. But I am specially pressing, pushing, insisting on every choir I've ever had to be there because for my present, you know what my present is? The biggest choir I've ever directed. I'll have to have close to 200. And we usually have 125 to 150 there already, especially Monday night. But this is Wednesday night. It's going to be break the choir record. And Brian said, well, Dad, what? He don't, he's never a Debbie Downer, but he sure was this time. He said, Dad, if there's not that many, just turn around and direct the congregation. <laughs> I, don't, I don't agree with that. They will be, because I've got a hold of Bloom Church, which I've worked with them, you know, many years. And I've got a hold of you all. And, I, and then I've got a hold of just this, that, and the other ones. Uh, the, uh, i got to get a hold of the uh, camp meeting choir, because I did that one for years. And so I want to have 200 people to direct these big long arms and I can reach you. You can see these arms and if you can't see these hands, go to the doctor. <laughs> okay, but please try your best. And even you that don't sing in the choir, get up in the choir. 6.30, it starts at 7, so get there at 6.30 and come over to that building next door and so that you can r run over the songs with us and it's okay if you don't. We're going to sing... Uh, the Keepers with Karen Peck. I don't know if we'll sing another one with her. She usually wants to, but I haven't talked to her yet. Uh, but I, she sent word to me through Brian that she wants to sing The Keepers. And The Keepers is a song that was written 
from a, uh, by, by the inspiration of a message that Cal Ray gave when, when they were at there. At, uh, they they get, come to Rubyville quite often, and they were there, and he preached a, a message called The Keepers, and it is a good song. In fact, it's, it, it was number two last month, so it might be number one this month. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I, was, I planned to do that, so. Okay, oh, and by the way, just let me know what night you're free. She's going to sing goodness of God with the choir, isn't she? I've heard it sang by many, many, many people. It's a very popular song in every church you go to. And um, when I was out in evangelism one year, it was all God on the mountain. Everywhere I went, God on the mountain. And it's a wonderful song, but everybody don't sing it wonderfully. And I'm spoiled by good singing, you know. I was raised with it, you all, and, and I just can't hardly tolerate bad singing. So, you know my rules. If you can't sing, just don't get in front of a microphone. But if you have to just mouth it, karaoke, now, what is that called when you? Pantomime, yeah. Okay, are you all there, at Galatians? Um, this is a kind of little Bible study preaching, and I, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Um, this is a, this book, it's, of course, it's a letter from Paul to the church at Galatia. And um, Paul usually starts, and he did here, he starts with his own first name, Paul, and he kind of gives an introduction to himself or why he's doing it. And he almost always then have a few verses of thanksgiving for all the people in that church how good they're doing, the the offerings they've been given, this, that, and the other. And he always gives praise to the church, but not Galatia. The Galatians, he left them out because this book is the most um, uh, Mark Bear-like than any I know, that he just comes right down to the point and says, I mean, one one time he says, oh, foolish Galatians. And I don't think he just said, oh, foolish Galatians. I think he said it. Oh, foolish Galatians. They, the, the church there, it was an odd church because, uh, you know, uh, he was sent out to the, uh, uh, the Gentiles mainly. And, and in the second chapter there, it tells about him and uh, Peter, James, and John on one side and Paul and Barnabas on the other side, how they divided up to who, where to go for their missionary journeys. And uh, so he, his mission was to the Gentiles, which thank the Lord he was, because there was a lot of our ancestors way, 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 way back that came into Christianity. At the time, the Romans were was conquering, the, they had already conquered, uh, they started about in 500 BC, and they went to about 500 AD as the rulers of the world. And, uh, and, and, uh, uh Rome, just like Greece and so many others, has what we call a polytheistic society, meaning many, 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 many gods. And they just had a god for everything. Remember Paul when he preached on Mars Hill? Oh, you know, you're so superstitious. You got a god for everything. And we were at, at Athens one time, and, and they pointed out there's still some of the little uh, uh, temples that were still there. Temple for this, temple for that, and so forth and so on. Well... So what happened? They started the church there. Uh, you know, Paul started it, and, and it, people got saved. Uh, some of the Jews got saved, some of the Gentiles, because it was a mixed-up bunch. The Jews came there. Uh, they were dispersed several times, and so there was Jews all over the Roman Empire, and there was Jews. This was present-day Turkey, right in the middle of it. That's where this little province was. I called it city-state. But uh, anyway... Uh, it, it, it was such a mixed up bunch of people. You know, there was, uh, there was uh, people that believed in heath- heathenism, all these idols, idols, idols. There was Jews that were very, very strict Jews, and they all understood and finally agreed that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. And they started this church, and it was doing really good. And so Paul, like he always did, once he felt like he was ready to move on, he moved on to another place and started a church here, started a church there. You know, he started a church everywhere. And so he, he was, he was uh, then, I don't know how he heard it, 
But people would send back things to, to him. Uh, uh, people would come and visit him in jail. He was in jail by this time. In jail, because it says at the end, from Rome. When, when, you, when Paul's in Rome, then just, you know, there, there's the jail there. And uh, so he, he was there and heard what was going on in Galatia. Oh, my. And it, it broke his heart. And so he might, he might not have been in jail by this uncle. No, he, he just wrote a letter. He didn't go. He wanted to go, I'd say. He wanted to go and just you know, give him a, a spiritual lashing. But so he goes and gives him, them a letter that lashed at him. I'm only going to read one verse in each chapter. And really, I'd like to take this and, and uh, call the Faith Bible Institute and let me teach this for about 10 weeks because it's uh, this sp- six chapters is, is worth that much. This could be your Sunday school lesson for six months because there's just every few verses you could have a lesson on. It's that, it's that rich. Okay, he, he introduced himself in, on chapter 1, verse 8. What he wanted to tell him here, this, and he really said it strong. He said, but though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, than you which we have, that, that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And you know what he said? In to, to, um, uh, let's see, the next verse down, I'll, I'll just read the last part. Let him be accursed twice. It's just like Jesus when he says, Verity, verily. This is Paul repeating himself, and he didn't do that very, very, very often. And so he was really upset. The ones that have brought this doctrine that that takes away from the blood of Jesus Christ, from the divinity of Jesus Christ, from the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, to the salvation of Jesus Christ, to the healing of Jesus Christ, from the coming back of Jesus Christ. And I say, let them be accursed. These are things that cannot be disputed. They are truths. And I don't care who says what. And oh, there's something going on right there. There's always something going on when I'm here, isn't there? There's something going on. I, don't, I, I can't even understand what, what it's all about. But there's something going on again that this guy has come with a book. They always have a book. And um, some of the craziest things you ever heard, and it's it's... What it eventually does is just lowers the power of Jesus Christ of being the Son of God. And Paul, if Paul was here, he'd write the guy a letter and say, let him be accursed. We got to be careful. Now, this was there, but what the doctrine that they were preaching on and what doctrine was coming into the church uh, and the, the elders, the believers, is that the Jews wanted them to know that they had to, the Gentiles had to first convert to Judaism and then they were able to be saved because they felt like that nobody could be saved except Jews. Okay? So this upset Paul. Upset Paul big time. That's why he was writing this letter. He had to counter, counteract the lies that were being told that was causing so much confusion in the church. Um, when I was general superintendent, <laughs> it's not a good job. I, there's more than once I had to go and s- settle some problems within a church. And that's not a good job. Uh, not a good job at all. There's one church, the whole uh, general board went to one year. And um, uh, th- this was years later when I was general superintendent. Uh, they never once, not once, I, had, I was there six years and I had to go to every church every year for six years. Not once did this church invite me as general superintendent to come there. And so what I did, I went when there was in revival. Check. I was there. If they don't say, glad to have Mr. Brother Bear. And he's our general superintendent. You got anything to say? But that's what most people would do. Uh, they just ignored me, which was fine to me. But the, I had one lady in the church that loved me. And probably that's it. 
uh, and she she went to the she was Paul to that pastor. She said, "Don't you know our general superintendent was here tonight?" And uh, so forth and so on. But anyway, uh, Paul was. If I was Paul, I'd be glad to send a letter and said, "I have to go with this mess they were getting." Because remember, you got Jews, you got Gentiles. All the Gentiles believed in this, that, and the other, and the Jews wanted everybody to be a Jew to go back to the Old Testament and. Now, let me tell you this. Uh, Do you understand what a covenant's about and what covenants we have? There's two covenants in the Bible. Really one, if you want to call the one to to Adam, you could call that a covenant. Uh, That was a, you know, okay. You you can eat of everything but this one because that was kind of the covenant. And there's uh, problems if you disobey that covenant. So, and then... All of the books of of Moses, we call uh, the first five books, the books of Moses, all of them go over and over and over again. See, the Ten Commandments wasn't the only thing in the the law, in the covenant of Abraham, I mean, not Abraham, but of Moses. It was more than just thou shalt not ten times. It was all of this other stuff, what you can eat and what you can wear and what you have to, you, you have to clean up this and clean up that. And if you're going to do this, you got to do that and, and over and over and over again. Well, the Jews wanted that back in, into the church. And so the church of Jesus Christ is under the second great covenant. It's the covenant of grace. It's the covenant of faith. It's a covenant of the blood of Jesus Christ cleansing every sin that we have and making us, not, not just forgiving us, making us new, different. And you know as well, you all know, you all, most of you are saved, maybe all of you are saved. And if you were saved in a uh, later in life, not you know, like some of us were children, some of us were teenagers, but if you were saved... Uh, Janie there has told us a little bit about her life before she found out about Jesus Christ and his saving power. And it's hard to believe that, that Janie was anything but just, you know, an, sprouting wings. Uh, uh, the attitude she has, wonderful. And a whole lot of the New Testament is attitude. It's, it's not thou shalt not, thou shalt not so much as attitude. The idea of love. You know, Jesus said there's two big commandments. I'm only going to give you two. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. That's the two I'm going to give you. And you know what? If you go down the Ten Commandments, there they are. He he just made it easy. And by the way, if you say, well, the Ten Commandments aren't in the New Testament. Okay. You want to go by the way Jesus taught the Ten Commandments? By the way, you have to. You got to go by it whether you want to or not. This is, this is what he said. It's not enough to kill your brother, but if you hate him without a cause, it's, it's the same as killing him. It's not as, as so much as to commit adultery. If you look at, at a woman in your, in, with uh, the intent, we'll put it that way, it's, it's adultery. So he didn't say, no more thou shalt not. He expanded the idea to be something spiritual. What we think, not necessarily how we act or what we act on, it's what we think. Wow. I don't want to, I don't want to read all your minds. I, I think I'd, it would be, I'd be pretty safe in saying. I know if, if Doug was here, he'd say, it's 8.30 in time to quit, Mark. But, and if he, did, if he wasn't, didn't say it, he would think it. And so, see, thinking, thinking. Expand upon it. Anyway, moving on. In uh, chapter 2, verse 18 is the one we want to read. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. This is one of the great verses in the Bible that is wrongly interpreted more than it's correctly interpreted. Do you know what this is all about? Going back under the law. If I used to be uh, what would it be? If I used to, uh, hard to say a sin without saying about the law, either because the sin is what? Transgression of the law. Uh, but let's say I was doing something um, wrong, and um, uh, so uh, I, I get saved, and then I, I quit that, 
uh, and then, then all of a sudden, I start that back. That's how people think this is all about. It, that, that we're uh, sinning like we used to. This is not what this is about. This is about making the rules like they used to be. And this didn't include, this included way more than the Ten Commandments. This would go back to the washing, to the, to the uh, holidays, to the, uh, what we eat and what we can't eat. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've said this, probably from this pulpit. Aren't you glad that the, the dietary restrictions are gone? Now, I'm not much on shellfish. Uh, I'm not much on fish much at all. I'm sorry, Scotty, you, but your, your sister loves it. So I'll, I'll bring her. You can fry a hamburger on the grill for me. But, um, but bacon, pork chops, sausage, ham. Keep going. Pork chops. Wouldn't you hate that we'd, just because you get saved, you have to quit that stuff? <laughs> I guess we could make it, but we wouldn't want to. Amen? I thought, okay. But, so that's what that was all about. That uh, the transgressor is somebody that breaks the law. And that's if he builds, see, if the, if the law isn't there, you can't break it. Right? If there's no speeding signs, you can speed. Right? Okay. Uh, when I started subbing out to Western, uh, when I, I started teaching music and had a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so I was regular there. I had my own classes. I had my own classroom. I had a beautiful chorus room that they let me use. Uh, by the end of the week, 450 to 500 kids had come through there. I had K through K, <laughs> K through 6. Uh, uh, the worst was 1. Grade 1 was the end of the day. Oh, goodness. Especially on Friday. Good land. Somebody gives them this d- d- uh, drugs or something. Or maybe they need drugs or something. But anyway, so what I did... On the board, there's Mr. Bear's rules. And yet, to this day, I mean, I missed two years being sick. And then uh, with Debbie, I didn't get to start the first two years. So now I'm started back. And uh, uh, somebody will be rocking their chair. I said, rule number one. Oh, I'm sorry. That is rear end in chair, feet on floor. The reason being... I had two kindergarten kids. The first day I ever taught music, kaboom, back they went. And it's a tile floor. It isn't carpet. So I said, so no more, no more. And they know better. And they should do that anyway. You, you know, in music class, when I was in school, it's the time that we had to be the most proper. No gum, right? No gum. And sit there. And I, like my music teacher used to say, I know I'm ugly, but keep your eyes on me. <laughs> she did, and she, she was. Uh, uh. But she was a wonderful music teacher. I, had, I, I learned a whole lot that I learned about music. I learned from her. She was really good. But, but she was married. He taught music at another school. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Uh, so rules, if I hadn't put those rules, they would have done them. And my, rule number two, I only kept two from now on, is no tattling. If I don't see it, I can't punish it. Because they will lie right to your face <laughs> that somebody did something. So I, you cannot trust the kids. I'm sorry. They'll try to get out of anything. So I said, if I don't see it, I, don't, I will not punish it. But if I see it, then I am inside. I always remind it. And remember who my boss is. Yes. Mrs. Witt. And she is pretty close to me. And she don't like it if you do anything against her daddy. So. Okay, chapter 3. And then this, there's three more, but I will stop with this because I'll finish it next time you dare have me. Okay, chapter 3, verse 24 and 25. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster. How would we know that we sinned 
if there wasn't a law that said, it's like I said, to bring us unto Christ. What's the first thing we need to do to get people saved? We got to get them lost. And when they get them lost, they need to get under conviction. And the, uh, that conviction is what draws them to Christ. And is that, is that one thing that's lacking throughout the church world? A whole lot of times, I go to a whole lot of churches on Wednesday and, and Sunday night, and there's not an unsaved in the crowd. And so what can you do? Something like I'm doing tonight, teach you a little and preach a little. Okay. That we might be justified by faith. How can you make yourself just as if you had never sinned? Cleaner than clean. clean. You know on these TV shows where they check uh, for blood? And, and, and you can do this, do that. And unless you do the right thing with bleach, they, you can't get blood out of things. They'll have this, turn the lights off, splash, 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 splash. Here's a boom, purple, purple rain. <laughs> and... Um, so that's the same way with sin. You could sin just to just to admit you've sinned to people, to ask forgiveness from the pastor, from the, your wife or husband or whatever, or the, the music teacher. That's not enough to cleanse you. The only thing that can cleanse you by law is blood the only atonement is with blood and atonement means at one minute meaning bring us back with God because God cannot tolerate sin he hates it he turns his back on sin that's why he turned his back on Jesus on the cross he became sin he didn't just just carry sin to the cross he became sin that's bible so God could not look upon his son as sin. The holy one, the divine one. So, what happened? He shed his blood. From his head, from his side, from his feet and hands, and hard to tell what else, the way they buffeted him and... and um, Made fun of him. Blood, blood. Stripes, with his stripes, what? We are healed. But that blood is the only thing. He already, this is it. I've said this many times. Every law has a penalty connected. And if you don't believe me, you just speed on the way home with the patrolman clothes. we we'll have Travis out, out there somewhere. He, st I, I, he stopped me one time. No, he didn't stop me. I was already pulled off. And he, he pulled over. Well, you know what I was doing? I was phoning my wife. And that's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to try to phone when you're driving. And I can't hardly get my big giant fingers to t do it anyway. So there's no way. So I pulled off and was calling Debbie to see, is there anything you want me to bring home? And Travis said, oh, Mark, what, is you having some problems? I said, no, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. It's the only one you'll probably see this whole week or maybe the whole, your whole life. Okay, moving on. Uh, where was I? I know. But after that, faith is come. Aren't you glad faith came in? But it's always been faith, you know. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and, and Abraham was, uh, was made whole, made clean, righteous by faith. But it wasn't, a, it wasn't a big general thought, faith wasn't. It says, but after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Mark's rules are erased. It still means you're not supposed to rock your chair. And it still means you're not supposed to be a tattletale. But if you do, and it's a, 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 a blood <laughs> a, a, um, error, 
then you can get forgiveness because the debt's already paid. Isn't that fantastic? I mean, aren't you glad this is... Do you realize all these cults and all these other religions, and some of them that are even uh, uh, Christian religions, not the, Christ, not the church, Christian religions, every one of them have like these rules that you have to follow, this much money that you have to give, and we might mention tithing once in a while, but nobody's checking your checkbook. Nobody's checking your, your account. That's up to you. I was going, you're, you're supposed to tithe. It's, and it, it's, by the way, if you want your budget to be squared and you have a little extra, tithing is the way to do it. And I told you that story before, and I'm going to tell you it again. Um, God is so good, and we are so blessed to be in the day of faith and grace that we get that which we do not deserve. And, and if we believe, if we believe, he will answer our prayers. Um, Debbie, uh, the week of, that she preached in Willisburg, she coughed and coughed and coughed and coughed and coughed and coughed all day, all week. Every night, every day. And she had gotten bronchitis from me, probably. And uh, I went to the doctor and got some medicine real quick. It didn't last too long. But, um, oh, that cough. And so, uh, more than once that week, she was having some doubts. Or were you not? And I really had, I had more than one talk with God down in the basement, walking. If you remember, I claimed it. And part of this, that she's kept coughing, it made me feel like, oh, goodness. Nobody's going to believe a word I say. Because she's not going to be able to preach. And I even told her, she writes out her notes very good. I said, if you start coughing, just hand them to me. I'll finish your message. I, I did one here for, at Beach Work one day. And, and you know what she did? She said, well, uh, Brian maybe can do it. <laughs> That's okay. We got way too many preachers in our family, and I don't know where I stand, but I used to be on second. At least now we got Brian, we got my brother down in, in um, North Carolina and his son. His son has a big church and doing great. And uh, then, then I, we have Gary and we have Gerald and all of these other preachers. Um, so I don't know where I stand. It doesn't matter. Um, I, I, Debbie's got 51 years. I've got 50. And so we both have the record there. Uh, and if, as long as we live the same as them... They can't beat us on that, right? But we've, we, we've had a wonderful life, and God's been so, so very good. If the Lord wills and I get come back uh, uh, in June, Debbie's May, maybe I'll get June. Maybe she'll get two in a row. Probably she should. Um, anytime, any, next time I'm here, we'll see if what the rest of the Galatians. I have read this and read this and read this. It just has been on my heart for weeks, just the book of Galatians. And I'm glad my iPad has the Bible in it. So I, I set and read. Okay. Oh, by the way, thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, she, uh, that whole day, she did not cough, not even a little tiny bit. And, and so maybe I did understand, maybe I did pray through. <laughs> I thought I did. I was claiming it because I felt the power when we prayed. But I wasn't doubting God, I was doubting Mark. Because I know what God can do. And because I, I think, look, God it invented a, a new job for Andrea, right? Isn't that great? And, and that's not the first. There's, we, we, I mean, we could have, instead of these things, we could have a list of jobs that people's have gotten. Because they trusted God to get them one. And to get them a better one, pay, better pay, better time. That's what God can do. 
Okay. You want to take over to Pastor? Pastory. Thank you for your attention. It's not too bad. I'm glad we're living under grace and not under the law, aren't you? <laughs> Thank God. That's very good. It's good stuff. But I appreciate Mark and Debbie and being, them being here tonight. And uh, just a wonderful uh, lesson for you. And uh, we just uh, looking for good things in the Lord this weekend. We got, uh, uh, we got some good stuff coming up, too, in the next couple months. We got some good singers, good preachers going to be here to help. And, so just keep uh, inviting your family and your friends. People's getting saved. That's what it's all about. Uh, that little guy got saved Sunday. He said, Jesus is great. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. That's a pretty good uh, analysis he made there, wasn't it? So we appreciate the uh, Satterfield boys uh, singing for us tonight and being here. So uh, we love you all. Come back Sunday. Just expecting good things in the Lord, okay? We're looking for him to... Oh, okay, well, pour it on there. Get up here and sing it, kids. Got all kind of singers. <laughs> 